just, it was fantastic. Uh, I think all of the representatives from the different Commonwealth jurisdictions have their own different style, which is great to see. And I think um, I was the second individual up. I was the first member of the opposition to stand up and give our initial response to the bill. Um, and so I tried to draw upon, I think, our British parliamentary heritage with quite a combative and uprising speech in order to try and rally support behind, you know, making amendments to this bill. Can someone from the government side please tell me how they expect healthcare to be conducted on a four day working week? How teaching should be done remotely? How policing can take place on a flexible basis? These are essential services upon which we cannot compromise for the shallow goals of the party sitting opposite. <laughs> Furthermore, but it was really interesting to see that each jurisdiction had a different approach. Um, there were certainly, I think, the uh, countries in South Asia, the Pak Pakistani and Indian delegations, they were a bit more conciliatory, a bit more kind of uh, gentle in their approach to seeking amendment, whereas you know anyone from the British Overseas Territories, they also had that highly combative, banging on the tables kind of approach to it. And so it was just a lot of fun, really. It was just great to see how all of those different uh, approaches gel together to, to put on a good show. Well, you certainly seemed like you enjoyed it, but if the subject matter of the bill didn't interest you, what was it like to have this first experience of you know really being in there in the thick of it? I think that was the most extraordinary part, really. I mean, I think the government of Trinidad and Tobago, they did a fantastic job of making us feel like actual parliamentarians. I mean, I, there was, I think I, I certainly was not deserving of the position in that chamber that I occupied, uh, but they made us feel very official. They made us feel like we were in a position to meaningfully contribute to something. So even though the bill didn't kind of have much relevance to, uh, to any of our lives, um, it was for a fictional jurisdiction, so it didn't even exist. Um, just the ability to stand up and have the opportunity to stand up in a, an actual legislative chamber, as glorious as the one in Trinidad and Tobago was, it was just fantastic. And I don't think I will readily have that experience again in the near future, but hopefully one day, but we'll see. Well, one day, 26 years old, plenty of years ahead of you, but has it perhaps whet your appetite for a future in Parliament? I mean, I think certainly the call to public service at this point is is quite strong, um, but I would distinguish going forward between, you know, public service generally and parliamentary politics. So I think whereas for the first question on public service, I'm ready to answer in the affirmative, yes, definitely. I think for the second question, it remains to be seen whether I'll be able to get in there or not. <laughs>